Thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me. Let every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord, let me follow close to you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you move in our midst today. Teach us. Open our hearts to receive your word. And let it be planted deeply in our hearts. That it may bear fruit. That it may grow. That we may be enriched and prosper, Lord, in you. Holy Spirit, we trust you. Father, we trust you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just have to catch my breath from worship. Um, it was wonderful. Um, so as I said, and I want to talk to you about praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. Um, but before that, you know, we got to go to where it all begins. And that's when we're born again. Right. Um, let's go to the next slide, Jeremy. So in John chapter 3, verse 3, remember Nicodemus came to Jesus in, 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 at night. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's during the day or during the night. When you need to know something, you got to go to Jesus. You got to go ask him. Right? But, Jesus, but Nicodemus came to Jesus by night saying, you know, we know you're from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And you got to recognize the signs. We have to recognize the signs. That when God is moving, you know, we, we need to seek understanding of what's going on. So Jesus, uh, so Nicodemus went to Jesus, and Nicodemus recognized that God was working in Jesus, and, and Jesus answered him, you know, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again is, being, is the first step to entering into the kingdom of God. And further on in the next in the next few verses in John 3, 5, 6, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And even right now, I know that these things are, it's going to seem like that's so basic, right? It's going to seem like, I know that. Um, but even for me, as I'm reading this, and I think we all have to have this heart that is open to the Word of God, tender to the Holy Spirit, and that trembles at the Word. I was telling Myra uh, yesterday that I was a little bit nervous about preaching uh, today about the Holy Spirit and about praying in tongues, and and the reason isn't that I'm because I'm nervous, scared, but I'm because I know that this is important and it's about Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I mean about, anytime I think somebody shares the word of God, there has to be some fear of the Lord, right? And I think that's what I was feeling. I feel that now. I felt that this morning. And I know uh, Holy Spirit was assuring me, but hear, to, hear and listen today um, with a freshness and let, let that word, let this word sink into your heart. So the beginning of our life in the spirit is when we're born again. We're born of the spirit of God. As God is a spirit, you are a spirit. You have a mind, you have a soul, you have a will, you have an emotion, you have emotions, you have a personality. You even have a conscience. These are all part of the inner man. And when I talk about the inner man, it's the, the part of you that can't be seen. I mean, everybody sees your face, your body, they know your physical attributes. But there's the inside man, the inward man, um, that is our spirit and our soul. That you know, it's expressed in our body. You can see in the person's facial expression. But the inner man of the heart that, that Paul talks about, that's the spirit. And you know, you are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body, right? But this verse here says, you know. Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And we know being born of the water is being water baptized. But we're also supposed to be born of the spirit. Can you go to the next verse? Uh, next slide. You know, Jesus went 
in, in John chapter 4, Jesus went to uh, the woman at the well. And she perceived that Jesus was a prophet. Same like Nicodemus. Nicodemus perceived that this man, this man is, is, is from God. And, and also the same with this woman. When she saw, she, you know, when Jesus, when she started having this conversation with Jesus, she perceived that he was a prophet. Oh, you know, he knows about God. And although this woman, you know, has had five husbands, was very notorious, she couldn't even come to the well at the same time as other women because she was looked down upon. When she recognized that Jesus was a prophet, what she asked him was about worship. You know, she said, you know, you Jews say that worship is here, uh, it's supposed to be in Jerusalem, while well, we think it's supposed to be here or wherever it is, you know. Um, but Jesus said to her, to her you know, the hour, is, the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, right? I mean, just think about that. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And so when you're born again, when you're born of God, you're born of the spirit of God. It's like Holy Spirit births you, right? You're born of the spirit of God. Amen. My notes here. I just love this moment because, you know, the, the Bible, Jesus said, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when she recognized that Jesus was, that, that Jesus knew about God, this burning question with her was worship. She wanted to, ha- to know how to be close to God. She wanted to know how to get to God, how to come before him. And isn't that something that we all want? We all want to come before him. And Jesus told her, you know, God is a spirit. And if you want to come to God, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter, you know, what nationality you are, what ancestry, what race you're from, what your country of origin is. You can be Filipino, Chinese, Hispanic, whatever, Caucasian, Jew, Greek, or Gentile. It doesn't matter. You know, we look at ourselves, you know, it doesn't matter what your profession is, whether you're an architect or this man, a doctor or a carpenter, you know, you look at yourself and define yourself by your relationship with others, like your father, a mother, a brother, a sister, or a friend, you know, it doesn't matter. When, when, when you look at yourself, you are first and foremost a spirit, and you are born of God. When you, became, when you became born again, when we gave our lives to Jesus, we became born again by the Spirit of God. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. But imagine yourself being birthed in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit. You're a new creation in Christ. And so the, 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 the real thing I wanted to say here in these, in these verses is that you're a spirit. You are a spirit. That is your essence. That is your, who you are. You know, what you look like in the outside, it doesn't matter. You're a spirit. And you are born of the spirit of God when you became born again. Right? In the next verse, in well, in the next slide, in John 14, 15, Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was getting ready to go. Um, he was getting, he knew he was going to go to the cross. Um, and he says to them, as he, as he's getting ready to go, he's getting them ready. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it, it neither sees him nor, nor know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you, this is in in the Amplified Bible, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. He may remain with you forever. 
that you know and recognize him, for he lives with you and const constantly and will be in you. This is the promise that God, Jesus gave to us. That he was going to heaven because he wanted to send back the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here with us. And we're born of the Spirit of God, but there's also, you know, the indwelling, and then there's the filling of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes. Let's go to the next slide. And, and Jesus continues, but the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. In John 14, Jesus, as, you know, Jesus is telling his disciples that he'll be leaving soon. He's preparing them for what's going to happen. Jesus was going to be crucified, but Jesus knew too that that wasn't the end. He already said it. If his body was destroyed, he was going to be raised up in three days, right? Again, that wasn't the end because Jesus knew that he was going back to the Father. He, he was going to ascend up to heaven, but he didn't. He was going up to heaven to prepare a place for us. He said, it's good for me to go because then the Father can send the Holy Spirit. And this is the thing that, you know, I know is that Jesus isn't here on earth. He's in heaven, right? He's seated up in the throne of heaven and he's interceding for us. But he has sent us his Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can abide with us. Thank you, Father. So when Jesus ascended up to heaven, he seated, he seated, he sat at the right hand of the Father, and is making intercession for us. While the Holy Spirit is here on earth, in in the next slide, it says that in the Amplified, but the Helper, the Comforter, the Advocate, the Intercessor, the Counselor, the Strengthener. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, it says, in my place, to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything I have told you. And this is what the Holy Spirit does. You know, he comes and he lives with us. Where Jesus is up in heaven, the Holy Spirit is here with us here on earth. Go to the next slide. For John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And the next part of that in Acts is, you know, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me, to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and, and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. So it's one thing to be born of the Spirit of God, but it's another thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus asked his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And in the next slide we see, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They waited on, they were, they, they were together in one accord in the upper room as we sang this morning. And then the Holy Spirit came and there were tongues of fire. And, you know, there was a mighty rushing wind. It's like the Holy Spirit couldn't wait to come. And there were tongues of fire on top of their head, and they spoke with other tongues. If you go back to the previous verse, it said, you know, Jesus said, they shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And if you look at this verse, when the Holy Spirit came, how did that power come? How is that expressed? They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So speaking in tongues is part of connected to the power of God in our lives. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is to empower us, to strengthen us. And, and when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't help but speak in tongues. And quite, you know, and even, even to this morning as we were worshiping God and we were, you know, singing and worshiping God and asking the Holy Spirit to come, I found myself praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. And, you know, I had myself muted, but I was praying in tongues and praying in the spirit. And there was, you know, the, the, this heavenly language flowing out of me. And it was just that utterance just kept coming forth. And it was, it was loud and it was go one way or the other. But it was like, I knew this is part of what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That you have, uh, you speak in tongues. That's just 
a part of it, right? Go to the next verse, uh, sorry, next slide. You know, I want to ask you this question. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? And have you spoken in other tongues? You know, we may all have different experiences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember I was filled with the Holy Spirit after I was newly saved. Um, we were meeting one evening to pray. We were standing around in a circle during prayer, and I just began to pray in tongues. I, I, you know, all around me, you know, the, the older folks were praying, and the older folks, I say older folks, but, you know, they were probably younger than I am now. Um, but I was probably 13, 14 years old at that time. And the, the people I were with, my parents, um, uh, other folks in the Bible study were probably in their 20s, 30s, and they were all praying in tongues. And in that atmosphere of prayer, I just began praying in tongues. Um, I didn't know a lot of the word of God. Um, nobody really preached to me about um, praying in the spirit. I knew about it praying in tongues, I knew, oh, that's something that's for me too. Um, and I knew that if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will. But I didn't know all these scriptures that we went to, and I, I don't know 1 Corinthians 14 and all that stuff. But it was just in this atmosphere because it's the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he begins to fill us. And out of that infant comes out these tongues, comes out these other tongues, right? Um, let's go to the next slide. No, again, I wasn't taught much about the Holy Spirit. Um, I was newly saved. And thank God for that atmosphere that brings about, that, you know, invites the Holy Spirit, just like we were singing today, just like we were worshiping. And then I just, you know, I got my heavenly language. And I don't even remember <clears throat> what it was or how it was, but um, eventually, as I began to pray more in tongues, you know, um, I'll continue praying alone or praying with other people. Um, my heavenly language changed. I, I kind of got more fluent in it. Let me go to the next slide. You know, um, I, I became more fluent in my heavenly language. Um, and, you know, it, it just began to flow, right? Um, and there were times where in prayer, you know, I would feel this unction in, in me. To, you know, there would be like seven or eight of us together. And um, there was, uh, you know, an older lady. Her name is Sister Chirin. I remember her because she would she would lead us in prayer. And I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. But she would lead us in prayer. And and I would feel something in my, in my being right here out of my chest. Like, it was kind of like butterflies in your stomach. It was, it felt like, you know, there's a mm, there's, uh, I, I, there's there's this thing rising up inside me, and I began to recognize that that's part of the anointing of God and the unction of the Holy Spirit. And even as we were, I was praying in tongues. We were, you know, I felt that you know, there's this some this this other tongue that I needed to speak out out loud. Um, sometimes it was in English. Sometimes it was not in English. It was just a like a breaking forth of the dam, and and the tongues would come out, and and you know, I. Just give it and it it changed it would contribute to the meetings at time it would change the course of the meeting it would ignite something else in someone and and they would you know they would begin to pray as well and you know and it would just bring something and um i didn't understand what i was praying in tongues and you know first corinthians 14 15 says you know when i pray in tongues i pray my spirit prays my understanding is unfruitful i didn't always understand it but after a while, you know, I began to get an impression or an interpretation of what meant what that tongue meant or what I was doing. Um, and I began to learn. I began to grow. Um, even though I didn't know what I was praying in the spirit, you know, I felt the strength in me. I felt stronger. My faith grew because uh, our God, the Holy Spirit was giving me this utterance and and I knew he was using me, so I gained more confidence. And so the next time we prayed, I was a little bit more confident. But I got to tell you, there were times where I, I, I kind of was also just still learning how to do things. And, and there were times where I was uh, kind of missed it <laughs> in that. But, you know, it's okay if you miss it. <clears throat> Go to the next, um, next um, 
slide, please. Um, you know, praying in other in in, in tongues. You know, I, again, I'm saying, you know, I'll be honest. You know, there were times where I was so nervous. I, I would hold back, wondering if this is is this you, Holy Spirit? You know, is it just me? Um, and it's okay to have that time to to be wondering because that's how we get sharpened. That's how we learn uh, from one another. And I also had to learn to get uh, correction and hear the other people I'm, I'm praying with say, yeah, you know, you can't miss there. there. It's like, but that's okay. You know, but, you know, Jesus, you know, I mean, I think about this, you know, I have a, a grandbaby now and I'm imagining the time that she's going to start to learn to talk. And even though she may probably not articulate the words properly, I'm not going to scold her for when she says Lolo or whatever and mispronounce Lolo. <coughs> I don't know. But, you know, God's the same way. He gives us this opportunity to learn and to grow and to take a hold of the Spirit of God. So, you know, praying in the Spirit, we all have, you know, our different experiences. But the first time that you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not supposed to be the last time. You're supposed to be ever be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be ever growing in the Spirit, continually praying in the Spirit. You know, Paul said, you know, I pray with my understanding and I, I pray in tongues and I also I pray in the spirit and I also pray in my understanding. I will sing in the spirit. And I will sing in the understand with my understanding. And that that is still Holy Spirit is still working in everything. Right. So with the different kinds of praying, you know, there's and I, I just put this together. This is not, of course, um, probably complete. And I'm sure there is more. But I try to express what it felt like sometimes when I was praying in the spirit. Sometimes it felt like I was sowing something. I was just putting, putting seed in the ground in the spirit as I'm praying in tongues. Sometimes it feels like you're digging something up in the spirit. Um, there are times where you feel like you're just searching and just looking, Lord, I don't know, what, what, what's going on? And I'm praying in the spirit. There are other times it just bubbles up, like I was telling you, you know, that happened, uh, you know, in that prayer meeting. It just felt like something was rising up inside me and I needed to bring it forth. Um, and it's overflowing. There's a time where it's plowing. It feels like it's work. You're, you know, you're, you're breaking up the fallow ground of your heart and you're just breaking things open. There's times where when you're praying in tongues, it's like you're crying out, God, you're out of my shaka. And you're 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 you you're bringing your whole heart and you're just opening up a way, right? And there's times where you're just you're just groaning in the spirit, and there's times where you feel like you're having to push. There's that pressing, pressing back or pushing back. Um, there are times too where you know I'm praying in the spirit and I don't necessarily feel anointed or I don't necessarily feel strong. But I begin praying in spirit and begin stirring up myself. And, you know, Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you. Stir it up. And you've got to be able to show it. And you begin to stir up that, that spirit of God is inside you. He's living inside you. Right? There's, so, there's also, of course, travail in the spirit. And, of course, there's building in the spirit. And, you know, Paul said that, you know, when I pray in the spirit, um, I am edifying myself. I'm, I'm building myself up. And it says, in fact, it says in Jude, you know, that you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. So when we pray, you know, you build up your faith. You build up your strength. You get stronger. Um, I like how the Amplified says that, you know, you know, beloved, praying in the Spirit, you know, uh, build up yourself on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit, make progress, rise like an edifice. And so you've got to rise like an edifice. It's as you're praying, you're putting one story upon another story, upon another story, upon another story. You're setting your foundation, but you're building on that foundation of the Word of God. You're building it on it in the Spirit. And that's what goes on when you're praying in the Spirit. So there are different kinds of prayer, and we have to let the Holy Spirit show us and lead us. But it, it's also as we come alongside one another um, when, when praying with mom, 
uh, with, with Linda. You know, when I'm praying with my mom, there's a different uh, things that I, I learn as I'm praying in the spirit with her. Um, when I'm praying with my wife or when I'm praying with other people, again, you know, everybody has something. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, everybody has a psalm, a hymn, a tongue, you know, interpretation of tongues or or a message, right? In the same way, sometimes in the spirit, when we're praying in the spirit, we're speaking mysteries to God. And it's our spirit, by the Holy Spirit, speaking uh, to God, right? So there are different kinds of prayer. And it's time to really spend time. So let me ask you this question is, how much time do you pray in tongues? Um, just time yourself, even as you're praying. Um, how much time do you pray in tongues? Are you uh, maybe five minutes? 10 minutes, 15, think about that. But if, if, if Jesus went to heaven and so that the Father can send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes and fills us and he gives us this gift of tongues, how much do we use it, right? Do we use 10 10% of the time, 10% of the power that's available to us by praying in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you build yourself up, right? Of course, we build ourselves up in, in the spirit, but we also build ourselves up in the word of God. But you got to have both, uh, spirit and truth, right? God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to have spirit and truth. And, by, and when we're praying in the spirit, the Bible says that, you know, it's the Holy Spirit in us praying the will of God for us. So, you know, think about that. How much time? Let's go back to the slide there. Different kinds of praying, right? Um, the next slide is, you know, that it, it, this is just an example. I was kind of quoting this, you know, in Romans 8, 14, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And it's when we're walking with the Holy Spirit, when we're, you know, being led by the Spirit of God. That's how we show that we are sons of God. That's how we become sons of God, I believe. And, you know, in verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And, you know, when we're praying in the Spirit, the, it's the Holy Spirit is working with us. He takes a hold together with us. And sometimes it's just a groan. You can't even utter it. It's just, just you know, not even making an utterable sound. But that's part of, you know, the Holy Spirit coming together with us. So, and the next slide. Um, so praying in the Spirit, you know, these are some of the fruits that you get. One is you have confidence. So when I was telling you about, you know, that time where we were praying and I felt this utterance come forth, and I, I had to give it up, right? Um, and, you know, I had some doubts in, in my mind as to whether or not that was the Spirit of God or not, but I took that step, and it was a blessing. You know, people were blessed. I was blessed. Um, but that what that gave me was confidence. It gave me the confidence, you know, okay, yeah, hey, I do hear from God. I'm hearing from God. And that built up my faith, okay, so that the next time that I felt that, I recognize that's the Holy Spirit wanting to wanting to use me, wanting me to say, say something out loud. And then, of course, you know, it brought strength to me. You know, I left that meeting, in which, oh, yeah, I felt stronger. I, you know, I felt like, you know, not I wouldn't say invincible, but I guess in some ways I felt like, yeah, I can take on the world because I felt like the strength of God was in me because it was released in that utterance, right? I had courage um, and I had joy. I remember this one particular time that praying in the spirit, we were we were praying in tongues, we were all together, and ago, maybe six, seven of us again, and we were at this home, and as we were praying, you know, you know, praying in tongues, um, there was this joy that came over me, um, and I just started to laugh. It wasn't a silly laugh, it wasn't like a mocking laugh, but it was such joy it was like a spring just and i just started laughing because uh, you know 
there was such a peace. It was just joy. It was just un, it's just joy, the joy of the Lord. And it, it, God laughs, right? And I felt that laughter come from come from inside me, and I just started laughing. And I know the other the other folks next to me started laughing as well, because you know, laughing can be contagious. And it wasn't laughing for the sake of laughing. I didn't even think about it. I didn't know about it. Um, I had never received any preaching, teaching, or whatever on it. But it was because that there was just just I was just joyful. I was happy, right? And so that was one of the fruits of that. Um, and then, of course, there's always this after that praying in tongues, there's this peace that you're settled. There's that rest and you can sell off. You know, it's like, and you're not moved by the situation that you're facing. You're not moved by your circumstance. Uh, you're not moved by trouble or stress. You're, you have this peace. And that's part of the fruit of the spirit, right? Um, and when you're praying in tongues, sometimes that you end, you end a lot. I always end, you know, try to end with peace. Sometimes, you know, when there's, when I'm praying in the spirit and I'm praying in tongues and I'm pushing back against things, there's time for, you know, I know, okay, there's still that fight that's still there, but for now, this is good. And I can stop and, and have peace. Right. And when you pray in tongues, I'm going to tell you, you're going to love people more. You just, because you 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 feel the love of God, right? And it's really the love of God. And even in Jude 20, right? It says keeping yourself, you know, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God. And I think the love of God is there because when you're with the Holy Spirit, you know, guess what? The Holy Spirit loves. The Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit loves me. And, you know, the, the more you pray in the Spirit, the more you can see other people with eyes of love. And, you know, and one of the things too with praying in the spirit is the sensitivity that you get. You begin to realize, you know, when Holy Spirit is moving or, or wanting to say something or wanting to do something, the more you pray in the spirit, the more you increase that sensitivity, the more you hear, and the more you get revelation as well. One of the things that, you, you know, uh, Paul said, you know, in Ephesians 6, he said, you know, you know, be strong in the Lord, right? And, but, you know, put on the full armor of God uh, and pray for me that utterance and, and, you know, pray in the spirit that utterance may be given to me. And <clears throat> I believe this is that Paul, who wrote like, what, three-fourths of the New Testament, had such utterance in words in English because why? He said in, in 1 Corinthians 14, I thank God that I pray in the spirit more than you all. He prayed so much that, you know, that's why he was so abounding in revelation because he would hear God because he became sensitive to how the Holy Spirit was moving. So praying in the Spirit, these are some of the fruits. And, you know, of course, we know about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? The fruits of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When, when we are practicing and walking in the spirit the fruits of the spirit come forth and you know this this i mean i hear people sometimes say, well you know i, I just don't i lack self-control you know i can't control what i do like do you need the fruit of the holy spirit you need to start praying in tongues you need to get strong in the spirit build yourself up so that this fruit of the holy spirit can come up you can't be without control you can control yourself if you can't control yourself, you need the Holy Spirit. You need to start praying in tongues. That's how you're going to get self-control. If you're too rude or brash or whatever, well, you need some gentleness. If you're if you 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 lack consistency, well, you need some faithfulness, right? If you're you know unkind, well, then you need some kindness. And that's this all comes as part of sowing in the spirit, praying in the spirit, you know, um, breaking through, breaking up the foul ground of your heart. Um, a lot of pride can be broken by praying in the spirit and humbling yourself before God. Um, and so there's so much benefit to praying in the spirit. So I go back to my question is like, well, how much do you pray in the spirit? How much do you pray in the spirit? Do you just pray in the spirit when it's uh, Bible study time or, or, or get together time and you're praying? But you can be, but here's the thing. You can be praying in the spirit sometimes 
you know, I'm just like you know, just praying silently to myself as I'm driving, as I'm walking, even as I'm doing other things, as I'm cooking, I'm praying in the spirit. And sometimes I'm praying in the spirit, sometimes I'm singing in the spirit. Um, and, you know, I don't always pray with my understanding because I don't always know, well, God, what do you want me to pray? But when I pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one praying with me and, and praying the things that I need to pray. So pray in the spirit. So this is, I'll end with this verse is, you know, finally, my brethren, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. Another translation is just ever be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think in the Amplified, it says, it says, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not just that one time where you got filled, but it's, you can get filled and refilled and refilled and refilled. How much, how many, how many times do you fill up the gas in your tank, right? How many times do you fill up the gas? And yeah, you get, you run out of gas, you have to fill it up again. You got to fill up, you run out of gas, you fill it up again. You drive, you fill it up again. So again, you know, and the Holy Spirit, of course, is, is our life, right? He's, he gives us life. And, and we need to be filled with His Spirit. So praying in tongues helps stir up. Praying in tongues invites Him. And, and He comes and partners with us, right? Um, and, you know, I love this. You know, again, going back to John chapter 4, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Right? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. And sometimes and you gotta, gotta uncork it. And how do you uncork it? Open your mouth. Pray in tongues. Speak in tongues. And you begin to let that the spirit of God flow inside of you. So that's all I have for today. I just, I pray that, you know, take this word. Don't let it just be um, a message uh, to hear, go in one ear and out the other. And I, I'll be honest, you know, I've done that many times when I was younger. But thank goodness the word of God is alive and it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back and he keeps bringing back to my, Holy Spirit brings back to my remembrance as we read earlier. He brings it back to my remembrance. And even some of the things that I'm telling you today, you know, the Holy Spirit was reminding me, remember this time when you had this option to pray. Remember the, how you got filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember the times that I showed up in the presence of God King. And that's, you know, this is, he, Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is God, right? He is God. And he's God with us. He's God here on earth with us. And he dwells in you. He dwells in you. But let's participate with him. Let's pray in the spirit. Stir yourself up. Begin to, you know, rev things up. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Keep praying. And find out from Holy Spirit all that he wants you to do. Amen. Amen.